Hello everyone, Parallax Stella here. Welcome to my tutorial of making Immortan Joe's mask from Mad Max Fury Road. You'll see that in the description below, I've provided a list of all the supplies I used to make this project. Now, the first thing I did when approaching this project was cutting out two long rectangular pieces of foam out. This foam can be found at any sort of home improvement store. For this type of foam, you're going to want to take an X-Acto knife, preferably one of the bigger ones, not the smaller ones just yet. And you're going to want to cut through all the way and make sure you can cut out a decent sized rectangular piece. These two rectangular pieces actually make up the sides of the mask that will go on either of your cheeks. Both of your cheeks, eh, you know what I mean. So now that you have your two pieces cut out, what we're gonna do is hold the pieces up to your cheek and make sure you measure just how much you want out of these pieces. You're going to want to measure the distance from your ear to about your chin. You're going to want to give yourself a little bit of room, so maybe about a finger, finger width of room between your chin and where the foam actually will be cut. Now that the measurements have been done, what we're going to want to do is take a pen and outline a sort of wing shape. And once we have the outline down, we can actually carve inward and make sure that it curves to fit your cheeks. So we're going to first cut the pieces out in the specific shapes that we've drawn and then we're going to go ahead and start carving. We're going to carve it in a curved space so that we can actually fit it to our cheeks comfortably. It's just starting from the ends that start at your ears and working your way down towards the chin. Now don't worry too much if your shape isn't completely perfect or if it's lumpy in places. This is where the sandpaper comes in. So you're going to take the sandpaper and you're going to go ahead and rub it all over the pieces. Both pieces should be sanded down to a fine grain and they should be thin. His mask isn't really thick, so we're going to want to slim it down a little. Sanding these pieces will also help with the curve. It'll help smoothen the curve as well as any blemishes you have on the outside of these pieces. So I missed a step before. Um, I actually did this before I started carving. Hold up the two pieces to your cheeks and you're going to take a piece of tape and you're going to stretch it across and put them on either side of both of these pieces. So it'll help adjust how much space you'll need for your mouth and the front piece. Now for the front piece where it covers the mouth, what I did was take two pieces, put them on the tape, and then use hot glue to actually secure the pieces in place. I didn't get to capture any video clipping of this, but it's super easy and you can see in the video that the structure is pretty solid. And don't worry, we're going to make it even more solid with extra stuff later. So now once we have all these pieces put together, what we're going to do is start carving. Carving and sanding are going to be our best friends during this entire project. Because this is a mask, we're going to have to get all the angular features smoothed down, way down. Now we are going to have to make two different cuts, two different holes on either side of the mask so that we can eventually put in a strap and put it to the back of our heads. This way, we can actually secure the mask with an elastic strap. You can stab the X-Acto knife through and it'll be perfectly fine. It won't hurt the mask at all. It is sturdy enough to hold this. And you can make a small diamond-shaped hole that will eventually hold the elastic strap that will strap this to your head. What I did after cutting the holes out was put some masking tape on the back of the mask the part where it will actually be sitting on your face. I did this because it would help solidify and also help retain the shape of the mask and keep it flexible while also providing a more gentle surface for your face. So here comes the fun part, the carving. You're going to take the small X-Acto knife and you're going to start carving the smaller details throughout the mask. It's going to be a little bit scary because you're not going to know how much to cut in, but that's why the masking tape is there, so that if you do mess up, there is still that barrier and you can still build off that layer. If you mess up, the masking tape will be there and you can still add other materials, maybe even hot glue some foam in between that space that you messed up in to start over. You're going to want to start carving 
the tooth and the jaw part of the mask in. This will also help smooth the entire surface of the mask out so that you can start creating more of a mouth and facial shape. And don't forget to cut out two different holes on either side of the mask for his pipes. I didn't show it in the video, but I took two pieces of craft foam. They're like thin pizza slices and I glued them to the bottom parts of the masks to help form a jaw bone shape. I also hot glued in the pipes. What I'm doing in this step is I'm taking a paintbrush, dipping it into some Mod Podge, and also just layering it over the mask. You want to get the entire surface. You don't want to get the back. You just want to get the entire surface of the front and smother it. This will provide your base and your sealant to start painting and adding other materials onto. This doesn't take too long to dry, but I suggest leaving it for about two to three hours just to make sure that it'll completely dry and that any spots or globs of it will be completely transparent and that way you can start fresh. Now that we have a nice base to work from, what I did next was take some epoxy, which though I highly recommend working in a ventilated area, I did not realize that this is going to stink as badly as it did and I got very sick afterwards. So what you're going to want to do is take the epoxy, mold it a little bit after you break it off, and you're going to stick it to the front of the mask, just in the area marked off for the teeth. Once you've mashed it on the face, take your small X-Acto knife and start carving in a tooth-like pattern. I went for a longer look on the teeth on top and then a smaller row of teeth on the bottom. After this step, I also took some spackling to smear on the tops and bottom of this mask. The top and bottom are more solidified. They have more of a thicker structure than the rest of the mask. Spackling takes a little bit longer to dry, so you can sit it out for a couple of hours, or maybe even a day, to help it harden, and then you come back to it, and you just have to sand. Once you finish sanding, everything is going to be dry, everything's going to be set. So what you're going to want to do is take another layer of Mod Podge, put it all over the surface, let it dry for a little bit, and then take some paint and start painting the entire thing. You're going to want to look at a reference of the Morton Joe's mask so you can get the color schemes just right. I had to mix some blacks and golds and whites just to get the right shades. When you start painting the teeth, I suggest by starting out with a white base. Once you start out with a white base, you can start darkening from there. So paint with white first, and then add in any black or gray detailing that you want. Now that you have all that done, set it aside, let it dry, let's take a sealant. Now the sealant is great for any surface that you want. I use this on coasters, I use this on all of my props. It helps keep the paint in, it keeps it from chipping, it keeps it from wearing down. I use DuraClear gloss varnish and I like applying this by hand because that way I can tell that everything has been evenly coated. Once all of that is dried, all you have to do is string your elastic through Make sure you measure the circumference of your head, hot glue it to the back, and you're good to go. Your Morton Joe mask is ready to be worn and shown off at any convention. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please contact me. Do not hesitate to ask. Drop me comments, give me suggestions. Give me some feedback on what you would like to see more in terms of cosplay tutorials, and I will be happy to deliver. I'll see you guys in the next video.